So, hi, Julian. How are you today? I'm fine, Angela. Thank you very much. How are you? I'm doing great. So, well, to all of our publishers and to anyone seeing this interview, I am here today with Julian Nettlehold from Battle Space Publications. So, Julian, why don't you, you know, let us know a little bit about yourself so our publishers can also get to know you a bit. So, yeah, Julian Nettlehold of Battle Space. Uh... I started Battle Space in 1996, following, um, I was a press officer for a show called Defence Systems International, Battlefield Systems International, apologies, in the UK. And I went around to all the exhibitors saying, is anybody writing about you? And they said, no. I said, well, I will. Because in my previous life, I'd been at a defence PR company. One of my big clients was ITT Defence. So, um, I developed an expertise in digitization and um, radios and communications. And I'd also been researching in 1984 online publishing. Okay. Because I worked for a company, a manufacturing company, and I saw that the information from companies wasn't getting to the stock exchange in fast enough time to reflect the orders or changes in the share price. So I worked with Topic, which was the first, I think it was the world first electronic publishing system. Um, okay. In the world, I think. Anyway, so I worked with them and then I started a magazine called Defense Industry Digest, which was primarily online. Um, that was in 1984. And I sold wow. it to the FT. In 1985, and it's now part of James. But interestingly enough, they didn't see the um, the value of online, so they didn't put a caveat on on me to stop me doing online. So I then <laughs> I got a call from the guy I used to work with, very clever guy, who I'd worked with for years on engineering projects, and he said, "I've got this thing called the internet." Would you like to have a look at it? And so I said to Mike, yeah, and he was a beta tester for Microsoft. So he said, come down and see it. So I went down to Bristol and there it was. And I said, this is what I've been looking for. So he and I started um, looking at expanding the online publishing and at a free farm rare show meeting with McDonald Douglas in 1997, Wow. They, okay. We took. I talked about this to a lovely guy, um, and he said, "Okay, we'll back it." And they paid us to sponsor it. And if you think back in those days, there was no internet protocols, there was no email. There was right. You know, when we put up the system in the farm brochure, which you can imagine isn't connected to the internet, it was all cables, <laughs> and, and I. <laughs> I can imagine. I, I was faxing the stories to Mike down in Bristol every night. I went wow. round the hotel, I went round the hotels in London at midnight and put printed issues of our email of our show daily content for the next day. And then we went and Chuck who's called Paul Tobin. And we went into the on Douglas show the next day and I said, watch this. And up on their screen came a picture. It was an MD11 with Mike, with Mike's. And he said, you can't believe it. Oh, and, my God. Uh, so you were truly so a pioneer. Like, you know, a pioneer mm -hmm. on the internet, on the yeah. online, exactly. And the yeah. online so content creation. Saw, yeah. So I then saw a trend. Ah. That, do you remember in, but everybody was taking laptops to shows. And I then saw a trend that these laptops were being nicked because everybody wanted them to get online. So that's when Mike and I parted company. Because I said, because in those days, and he, he was saying the internet's the king. And I said, look, Mike, it's all very well having a, and we call it Defense System Daily. It's all very well having a website called Defense System Daily. How does anybody know it's there? I don't know, I lectured on this. It's all, and all these people, if you remember, were building websites in those days. And they were saying, aren't we brilliant? 
and they were saying we're getting two million hits a day. And in fact, one of my wow. larger publications, our week was getting that. So I was saying, well, big deal. How much are you learning from this? So he and I split up, and so I set up Battle Space as a subscription service. And right. in 1996, so I was charging, which is which is now coming back into because in the old days everybody was giving it away for free and nobody was making any money. Right on the internet, <laughs> websites were bust. So I started charging, and then I said what we have to do is email the headlines instead of instead of people having to go to your website to look for the news we email it like we do every monday to okay. our readers so they can so also pioneer on newsletters yeah so <laughs> so then we found out jane's jane's because of the old model jane's had to feed the printed weekly rather than the website because if they put the news straight up on the website the weekly would die and in fact that's what happened what 30 years later last year so i was right. beating james to any news particularly in america i've got a lot of clients in america so i could email a story at midday and it would get to the uk readers at midday and it would get to the american readers at seven o'clock and we'll even exactly. beat the daily newspaper. So that's what we have for a long time. And, um, wow, that is amazing. Um, unfortunately, um, the competition caught up on me. And, I bet. Um, yeah. So we then broadened um, broadened the scope of, of the news to um, have a, more than communications to armor, guns, cannons. Uh, World news, we now do, as you know, Ukraine news, we do management on the move. And we're one of the few defense um, online systems who do contract news, which I find fairly strange. So we do a, a weekly contract news, worldwide contract news update. Okay. That's why we get, we're known as the SME publication. So we get a lot of subcontractors subscribing because they want to know who's running the contract. So that's um that's basically where we are. We do military vehicles and we, we add in space um about 10 years ago. And so that's what we do. We we just grow the segments depending on um on the market market requirements. Right. So that's that. <laughs> well, people, now you know with who we are dealing today in this interview. I mean such an expert in your field. Um, I guess I, I will bet with a lot of knowledge and experience that you could share for hours and hours about what you know this road has been to you. But well, well thank you, thank you so much for, for think, being sharing the other, this I, with us. I think Please the other on. point before I go to mention is that, and, and I told this to a rival of mine who bought a, a company, I won't name the name, but he paid four million, he spent four million quid. He didn't. He said to me, "I don't understand publishing." I said, "You're never going to make money internet publishing if you just cut and paste press releases. That everybody knows you're doing it. Comment is what sells internet publishing. So I I do a comment on on a lot of um, entries we do, and you have to be fairly controversial. But I've never been sued. <laughs> right. Oh my God. But that's what that's what sells internet publishing and people who. In the old days, people were just cutting and pasting press release, and they thought, and then they say exactly. to the reader, "We want a hundred pounds a month for this," and they just said, "No, we can," you know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, Julia. So I want to ask something about you, and you already mentioned a little bit about your background before getting into the publishing industry, but I would love to ask. Did you study anything related to publishing or writing? Oh, well, I did the English A level at, at Eton. Um, that was I didn't go to university because I wanted to join the army, but I failed the army. Okay, so how did that love for writing born? Well, I, I started. What I saw was because our family is um, 
engineering base where, where from we started GKM, the engineering company. And I saw that because I was in marketing for my company, I used to go around the magazines and sell, okay. you know. Yeah. And I saw, I saw that um, it was a gap and I, I used to drink on a Friday with these people called Defence Magazine. And I love horse racing. So the, the owner of the magazine called Derek Baker said to me over a drink on Friday, he said, because the company I work for just been taken over, so I didn't go and join them. So he said, do you want to come work for us? Doing vehicles, I was a specialist in military vehicles, and run my racing magazine. That was manna from heaven. So I, I, I've been in horse racing all my life. So I ran his horse racing magazine and wrote for the defense magazine. Okay. And I saw that one of the things that was happening because of the technology developments, the engineers and the, the big companies like BA Systems, Pessiv, GEC, they couldn't write press releases because they're engineers. And engineers right. In those days, the PR departments were fairly small. So I set up a PR company when I sold Defense okay. Industry Digest. Basically writing, and that's what Battlespace is based on, writing readable English. Right. So that the reader can understand. So it's not too technology based. So they all blur over and think, but it's it's um it's designed so people can understand the technology. And so I represented ITT Defense, Leyland Trucks, Land Rover. Wow. Uh, we had Pilkington Optronics. We had a great company. I said, that is amazing. That I went, then I went to Spearhead to do their um, be the press officer for their technology event. And that's that's how it went from writing press releases and PR to publishing. That's great, Julian. Okay, Th thank you for sharing, you know, and helping us understand how everything was, you know, like the step-by-step -step in your yeah. career. Um, it is amazing. It is incredible. You found out in that moment that a specific gap and it took you, you know, all the way up. So yeah. it, is, it is amazing. Okay, so my next question for you, it is, could you, <laughs> could you please share with us the most difficult thing you've encountered to be where you are today? I think most difficult was establishing battle space because I established it at home in Scotland. And um, so, so I was living up there. First of all, with travel. So I was traveling a lot from Scotland. So I eventually had to move in. In '96, so I moved to London in 2003 because I was going from when they direct flights to America, and I developed. I'd been working in, America, in the American defense industry with another client, Astra Holdings, in the '80s. So I I saw it in America the, the key to establishing battle space because working with American companies, they're brilliant. They work with you. Um, the English companies tend to want something for nothing. The American companies look at it a different way. They say, here's a guy with a magazine. We've got a product. We work with him. And my breakthrough came when I was at the Farm Bear Show in 1998. And I went to a company called DRS Technologies, which is then a small sonar company turning over $900 million. And the CEO is a guy called Mark Newman. Right. I started talking to Mark, and we got on. And he likes cars. I like cars. And he's very very open, very dynamic. And he um, he bought a, a computer company in Florida that I knew about. And so we started talking. Um, as he grew, I grew because the more companies he bought, the more advertising I got. And he sold in 2003, I think it was, wasn't it? to Finn Mechanica for 4.8 billion. So that was, and so that's how I established the American connection. And then I worked for Bill Craven, wow. the guy who um, he sold the computer company to, and then that developed into ITT, and then um, Ken Beaterman, who's an old friend of my from ITT, he then went to Viasat. So I worked with Ken at Viasat, 
Ken then has now taken over the CEO at Comtech. So the American, they're very much more dynamic in the way they, they treat publications and they see it as a benefit. A lot of, a lot of British companies see it as a, um, a freebie. So that, that's, okay. that was my break, really. And the other break was a lovely company. It was my first ever um, company profile. It was a company called Oxley in, um, in the Lake District. It was amazing. They're amazing. Um, amazing company where they made, the founder, Freddie Oxley, made capacitors for the radar industry in World War II. Okay. And they're still, I still work with them. We do a lot of work together. And their chairman is Peter Bedwin, who I work with at ITT, so you can see where the... Where it got, yeah, <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you for sharing all of that with us, Julian. Now, we would love to hear like a piece of advice from you. So, what advice would you give to someone starting in this publishing industry now in 2023? Yeah. I think the, the advice I give is specialized. If you find a specialist product, well, this, this was the old James model, which is now unfortunately lapsed. James used to employ somebody, train them up in the newsroom, then they'd go on to edit the yearbook as a specialist on night vision, transport, guns. That's that's gone. So there are very few in, and you know, I'm not young. The, the pool of talent in defense publishing is, um, is not big. So if I was coming into this industry, I'd um, look at a, say, um, I'd say AI or 5G would be, I can't find anybody to write on 5G. It's very difficult to find, but you know, not all the time. So that's what I'd do if I was coming into this, into this industry. We tried cyber. James, trying cyber is a difficult one. <laughs> no money in it. It's like it's like electronic warfare. It's, it's so specialist that okay. that a people because it's specialist and secret. People a don't advertise. There's no income. B it's terribly complicated. So you've got <laughs> to be like, I don't know one two guys, one James, one Armada, who are brilliant at um, EW. But there's two people in the whole world. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah. So yes, become a specialist in a niche matter. Yeah. And then, okay. That is your- And then, your... And then develop, a, develop a, the other thing is once you've done that, you develop a core readership by, by email marketing and because any publisher needs circulation. So that's what you've got. You've got to go to the shows and line work the shows, not as much as I used to. But you know, you travel, you've got to travel, you've got to go to be seen at the shows, you've got to talk to the companies, and you know, that, that's how you do it. Right. So networking, building a community, all of that is important, right? Yeah. Okay, Julian, thank, also, thank you. Yes. Yeah. No, I just say also that we're all a club, so you need to talk to your fellow journalists to, um, to get new ideas. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, Julia, my last question for you will be, why did you decide to partner with Neostex? Well, I, I saw you as a, as a very good avenue to widening our, um, our circulation and knowledge base over the world. And you've got such a good coverage, more than I've got. So it was a good, it was, it was, a, it was a good area to um, to work with you guys, so that so, so we can a I can give you some specialist input to the the editorial, and you've you've got the much bigger circulation than I have. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, well, Julian, thank you one more time for you know taking the time in your day-to-day -day agenda for having this interview with us. Um, 
I hope that, you know, other publishers listening to you or other writers, especially subject matter writers listening to you can also learn um, from you or people who are just starting in this industry from all of your expertise. Um, where can people reach out to you if they would like to do that? Yeah, I mean, if, if people want to send me features, I'll, I'll publish them. Um, okay. The, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And where? How they can... Being they, could just, they could just email me and um, we've got a we've got a features section on the website which goes and how's your email, email? So we could just... have you got that yeah i know but for the video interview oh, sorry. it's j dot nettlefold that's f o l d at battle hyphen technology dot com and the battle space website is battle-technology.com exactly exactly so the his website is also battle-technology.com right yeah so well thank you so much julian um we really appreciate your taking the time for doing this with us and well we'll see you in the next interview okay great thanks a lot Andrew. bye bye take care you too